Welcome to Norfolk Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batcher, and we are here today to talk about kids and fishing. That's correct. Right now, there's some smiles right. on the sofa. <laughs> okay, I got Greg Shivers, who's the executive director for Southside Boys and Girls Club, and sometimes tells me you're talking about kids and fishing, but mainly about kids. And George uh, Rivera, president, of East Coast Repair and Fabrication. How you doing? That's good. I'm doing. And you're good, the good, fisherman. Sir. Well, I, I try to be. Uh, I, I love to fish. I'm not the greatest, but I love to fish, and this is, what, you know, one of my passions. So, because all those big ones got away on you? Yeah. Okay, so we'll get all the fishing <laughs> jokes out of our system, right? Okay, I got, I'm going to ask you, what is East Coast Repair and Fabrication? East Coast Repair and Fabrication is a ship repair company in the Hampton Roads area. We've been here since uh, 1999, and uh, we're currently, you know, on a small little shipyard, and... Uh, just we, a little shipyard. Just a little shipyard, and we just hope to grow and be able to help people like the Boys and Girls Club, which is one of my passions. That's awesome. Uh, Greg Shivers, you being the executive director of Boys and Girls Club, how long have you been with them? I've been with the uh, Boys and Girls Club movement about all my life. Okay. So started I, out as a member. I know I don't have to ask this question because <laughs> I see your face. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I know what Boys and Girls Clubs can do for you. And, and then you have a passion, which is my passion is for children. So I want to give back what was given to me when I was a youngster coming up. Now, I remember when we uh, reopened the, the gym uh, several years ago, there was the B-Ball Challenge. But it's more than just B-Ball, right? You're correct. So what kinds of programs do you all have? Uh, we do programs, that, uh, educational programs. We do programs for career development. We do the arts. We do sports, recreation, and fitness, which is uh, a great priority for the children, but it's low on our totem pole. And, and we do civic engagement programs, so, and then healthy stuff for the children. Now, it's all about the kids. What age limit? Our ages start at five years old, and we go all the way up to 18. Sometimes we have 24, 25 year olds in the club. As long as they're a, a role model for the younger ones coming up, we let our alumni come as long as they want to. That's good, because that really is really what it's about. It's not just preaching to them, but setting them up uh, with people who can give for them a good example. Right? Correct. Got a need for mentors? We have a great need for mentors. That's one of the challenges that we have right now, finding folks that want to come out and help us mentor these children. Uh, we have a lot of children right now that have different issues, uh, different concerns going on in the communities that we serve, and we need people to come out to help us, definitely. I, I had the pleasure of talking to a lot of people who were on that sofa, and there are opportunities galore in this community for kids to get plugged in, and that, but so often they don't get a chance to see those opportunities, do they? No, they don't. And that's really where you guys fit in. Exactly. In that niche. What's the cost for a kid to participate in Boys and Girls Club? Well, uh, it, it varies from club to club, but for our clubs, it's a report card. Wait a minute. A report card? A report yeah. card. A report card. Because we have our priority outcomes that we're trying to address in the communities that we serve. And the first priority outcome is academic success. So in order for us to achieve that priority outcome, we like to look at the children's report card. If they bring their report card and we get a chance to analyze it, see where the children need the most help in the subjects that we have identified, they can get in. Because that really is part of, I could, we always refer to it as a three-legged stool. <laughs> Having that skill level, the academics. And the character building. That's right. Right. That's right. So that report card is a good a good litmus test. That's right. Okay, so you got a kid with a report card, but these programs cost you money. Well, that's where folks like George comes Here in. There you go. <laughs> that's where yeah, actually that's where folks like George come in. Our uh, our sponsors, our supporters, uh, we depend on them heavily and, and, and they come through year after year and I don't know what we would do without them. Okay, this fishing tournament. You got it as flounder. Does that mean everything else gets thrown back? Everything else, well, you can keep it, but it won't count. <laughs> well, oh, it won't count. Okay, now are these are, are these kids throwing a line off the, the yes, your, your dock? Yes, the kids. Uh, yeah, the the tournament starts on Friday, um, July the 18th. Okay. And on Friday we have two trips: one in the morning, one in the afternoon, in which we select the kids from the club based on scorecards and behavior. And Greg here selects them uh, and gives them a challenge through the year, which they look forward to go. And then we, we do an open tournament of their own for the kids uh, in the morning and then on the afternoon for the biggest fish. Not, not necessarily a flounder, for the biggest fish they can catch. And they do catch a lot of croakers, a lot of spots, uh, and uh, it's, they really enjoy it. I mean, okay. it's a smile. George, you said trip. So where are these kids going fishing? We take them to the Hampton Bridge. We, we take them fishing to the, to the bridge tunnel uh, from uh, uh, Lynn Haven uh, Inlet. 
and we take them about a mile out, two miles out. Uh, we fish for like three hours, then we take them on a ride to see the dolphins. So they're in a boat. They're on a boat. They're on a charter. Not boat. one of them you're repairing either. No. I just, on a I just wanted boat. to check that. Private charter. Per, per, wow. How many of these kids have been on a boat? Well, most likely it's their first time getting on a boat. So, and then you're going to put a hook in your hand. Yeah, that's right. Or a line in their hand, hopefully. <laughs> that's, that's why we need a lot of volunteers to help <laughs> out. Because it's a tangling line yeah. day. You know, it's just, you got to be skillful on, on tangling lines or cutting lines and Hey, guess what? Not hooks. my problem. I'm not going to be on that boat. <laughs> okay, July 18th is guaranteed smooth waters and clear skies. Hopefully, that's what we hope for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and a lot of fish getting caught. And a lot of yes. fish getting caught. Now, do you do this, try to do this one-on-one -on -one with an adult and a, a, a child, or is it going to be? It's normally, the ratio is probably one to five, one to seven. But that is such a cool opportunity to do some mentoring, though. Exactly. Yeah. So, because I know when I was out in a fishing boat my first time I was with my dad, it was not a good experience, but, <laughs> uh, but, but a lot of bonding took place. Yeah. And, and for these children, it's, a lot of times it's the first time for them ever being out on a boat or even fishing. You're surprised that we're surrounded by water, especially where we're at in the Berkeley section of Norfolk, mm -hmm. and some of these kids have never gone fishing, and some of these kids definitely have never been on a boat before. So they thought that fish came from Captain D. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, never mind, yes. Okay, now that's going to be the fun day. That's going to be the fun day. The captain, same captain's the next day? Uh, the captain's meeting, it's on um, the same day on the afternoon at 5.30 at Binding's Landing. Um, and then from there we registered. We picked the mystery fish for that day, and then the mystery we, fish. Yeah, we have several prizes on this tournament. I thought it was flounder. It's flounder, <laughs> yes, and we have a few kinks in the line, and so we throw in a, a, the biggest tall fish, uh, get a prize, and then we pick the mystery fish at the captain's meeting, and then Saturday morning, then we all go out fishing for the whole day. Okay, I'm going to show my ignorance here. Somebody's got to <laughs> teach me. Okay. You, when you go out and you say, okay, I'm going to go fish for flounder, how do the flounder know you're fishing for them? <laughs> well, the bait that you use, the rigs that you use. Uh, so different fish eat different things. So we, you get, just got to find the right bait for that flounder you're looking for. You, you'll catch a lot of the different things in the way, but hopefully you catch that winning flounders. In and a, flounders run about... Uh, what would, you, what would not embarrass you to pull it out of the water? Oh, it has to be a, a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It has to be a keeper. We don't want to break the law, so anything under uh, 17 and a half That's inches. That's right, because they're throw, watching this, you know. Anything under 17 and a half inches, we throw them back in the water. It's got to be bigger than 17 and a half inches. That's, that's significant. Yeah, that is significant, but there's a lot of good fishing Fishermen out there, professionals too, that, you know, they catch big flounders. They know where to spot. They do this for a living. They fish every weekend, and they, they know where to find them. So this is going to be, now, in pre-tape, you guys were, what's the purpose of fishing on a boat? What, what do you get out of it? Uh, me personally, yeah. I, I, I work 24-7, seven, seven days a week, very stressful job running three different companies. You know, it, it's a challenge. So, uh, and I just like to go out there, turn the phone off, no emails, no communication, and just you, the wind, nature, the waves, uh, the fish, the time. I mean, it's just valuable time. It's just a stress relief for me. So you throw it out there and you just kind of wait for I, it to do this. I throw the line and, uh, you know, I move it around a jig and wait around. And depends on which type of fishing we're doing. We anchor down, chum for whatever fish we're looking for, or we just go out looking for cobias or... Uh, go out offshore looking for tuna, mahi, so every fish is different, but it's just you and nature and, and some about boating. And, and the cool part about it is in July, you can get all that, plus help Boys and Girls Club, right? That's right. And that's what that's this is the really biggest about. thing, and the boys are my passion. That's how I grew up, helping people, and that's the reason for our company. We started this company to help, and that's what we did. Okay. I noticed you used the word looking for instead of catching. Well, if, I mean, <laughs> if it was that easy, then... <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> That's why they call it fishing. You, know? <laughs> you got to know where they are. You got to, you know, I, unfortunately, I don't go out as much as I would love to. So I, I, I'm on that lower category. I got to look for that. You got to look for <laughs> it. I got to look for that. I can tell you where Farm Press is. <laughs> it's right, right there, not far from Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so so what's, this, what's this event mean to you guys at the Boys and Girls Club? Why is it important to go fishing on 
Well, it's important for, for our programs because a lot of times, you know, we come up short with some of the items and mm -hmm. some of the things that we need on our daily operations. So when we have this fish and tourney and, and the money that it generates, it, it continues to give us an opportunity to impact the children that we serve in the community. Okay, let's talk turkey. What are some of the disappointments you've had where you, if you'd had a couple more bucks, you could have done it? Oh, we could have a few more kids in the, in, in the club, you know, that can't afford to come in the club or to, uh, to do the spacing. You know, we can get a few more kids in there. We have two units. They're about approximately about a mile apart from each other. Transportation where we can get some of those kids because this club is packed, but this other club down the road can take a few more kids. So those are the things that have been hit and miss, you know, those type of things can. George, you were telling me about uh, it's all about catching. I mean, you catch that Kobe hit. Put the good fight in, and, and you get it. That mm -hmm. makes that, that gives you the smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What gives you the smile about these kids? Well, these kids, I've, I've dealt with kids all my life, pretty much since my mom was a volunteer social worker, and I started the company to build a school back home for disabled kids. Uh, so the passion, the love, it's always been there for kids. And when I learned about the club, one good thing to notice is. When I first heard the word Boys and Girls Club and Ken Newman actually asked me to join the club. I had a feeling Ken I, had his fingerprints I, in this. <laughs> and I thought that, well, yeah. why should I join it? It's just a club. People pay to get in and somebody benefits from it. Uh, so Ken asked me to come in and check it out. And I did. And when I went, uh, it was totally different than what I thought it was. You know, I thought it was just another YMCA or something like that. And really, like you said, it just take a report card, good behavior. Um, and, and role models to, to just join the club, and I, I, I thought it was a good cause, and I decided to join in and be, you know, make it one of my main uh, charity events. That's awesome. So on July 19th, if you're going across the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, you know that a good cause is right below you. That's right. That's right. We want to thank you for everything that you've done to, to raise the eyes of uh, boys and girls uh, on the south side and throughout Norfolk, and knowing that there's somebody out there looking out for them. And, uh, and I hope those Cobia are smarter than you guys. <laughs> uh, How's that? That's great. <laughs> okay. But the well, flounder, let them get, yeah. get caught. I'd like to thank some of the sponsors, if, sure. if I have a minute. Yeah, uh, real quick, yeah. Uh, this year we brought Norfolk uh, Marine to join us in this club, one of the greatest uh, dealers out there. And they're going to join us, and they're going to have uh, a underwater uh, boat demo. They're going to be displaying all of their boats and you'll be able to ride them and stuff like that. Super. Thanks a lot. Thank it's you. a whole community coming together. That's right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Good.